inside my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceived that this also was a chasing after wind, for in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. I'm going to be completely honest and say that I really had no idea what Ubisoft promised us about Assassin's Creed, mostly because I had already made up my mind about reserving a copy of the game by the time they started making promises, and therefore had no reason to pay them any attention. Apparently, a few other critics in the industry were a little disappointed that Assassin's Creed didn't, quote, live up to the promises Ubisoft had made, end quote, and as a result, gave the game a lower scoring than it probably deserved. Myself not knowing what Ubisoft promised us about the game might make this review a bit more biased than it should have been, but at least the game will get all the credit it deserves, if not more. Entering the world of Assassin's Creed is unlike any other game you've ever played, partially because of a big twist that I'm not going to spoil for you, but mostly because the game combines elements from many other types of games, and attempts to innovate every single one. Assassin's Creed takes place during the Third Crusade and follows the somewhat arrogant character of Altair, a member of the Assassins, an actual historical sect of Muslim Fedayeen who really existed in the 12th century. Altair is one of the best and therefore on the job to recover an artifact from the city of Jerusalem. Unfortunately, our white-clad protagonist's uppity arrogance gets the better of him and the entire mission gets totally boned. For this failure, Altair is not only stripped of his rank and title, not to mention all of his weapons, but stabbed in the gut as well. The head of the assassins then tasks Altair with assassinating nine political and military figures who have established themselves around the Holy Land in order to profit from the war. If Altair can find and kill all of these nine corrupt men, the Master just might forgive his earlier failure. If that's not enough, it becomes evident early on that the Master might not be telling Altair everything that he knows, and that there's something else that connects your targets besides the fact that they're all corrupt evil bastards. Break his legs, both of them. Their power and influence corrupts the land. Ubisoft really has done their homework. The story in Assassin's Creed has a heavy basis on actual medieval history. All of the targets you'll track and assassinate are real dudes who actually kicked the bucket in the 12th century, and there are no orcs, goblins, or sand monsters to speak of. As I stated earlier, right from the start there's this big twist that Ubisoft had kept secret about the game's story. From its outward appearance, Assassin's Creed may appear to be a medieval-style action platformer adventure narrative in the typical Ubisoft vein a la Prince of Persia, but there's actually more to the game than meets the unplayed eye. Assassin's Creed is, in truth, a story within a story. The action platformer side of the game is the only side you'll be able to see unless you actually play the game. The other side of the story and narrative gets a bit more complicated, but I'm reluctant to actually spoil it for anyone who hasn't played the game. I will say, the really interesting thing about this multi-layer narrative is that it attempts to explain everything about the game. Why you have a heads-up display, why you have to press certain buttons to perform a certain action, and even why the Middle Eastern characters from the 12th century are speaking perfect modern English. So I really recommend that you play the game in order to understand for yourself exactly what I'm talking about. I assure you, this is no game! Essentially, Assassin's Creed stands boldly in the face of every big-budget first-person shooter that was released in 2007. Indeed, Assassin's Creed is about as far from a shooter as you can get. The Prince of Persia-inspired platforming, mixed with a Hitman-style objective, all set within a watered-down version of Grand Theft Auto's open-world environment, and each with their share of innovations, creates a truly original experience. The setup is similar to a few things we've seen in the past. As you take out each target, you gain back a new weapon or ability that was stripped from Altair at the beginning, becoming more dangerous and more powerful as the game progresses. Altair's chosen arsenal is simple enough. You can use a sword, knife, throwing knives, and a stealthy hidden blade to cut, cleave, and kill your foes. You'll visit Jerusalem, Damascus, and Acre, each with their fair share of differences and similarities. Traveling between cities can be done easily on horseback, but you might end up running into an entire army of enemy soldiers in doing so, and whether that's fun or freaking crazy is your call to make. The combat takes a little getting used to, but once you've nailed the controls, it's as easy as riding a bike. While the combat in Prince of Persia got its fair share of flack, Assassin's Creed's combat is almost sure to get more. The timing-based counter-kills offer some of the most satisfying takedowns we've seen in years, the enemies can seem irritatingly stupid at times. Sometimes enemies completely surround you, yet each slowly waits its turn to get stabbed to death. It doesn't ruin the experience, but it certainly detracts from it. 
Within each city, you'll need to pursue your target through a series of peripherals such as eavesdropping, interrogation, pickpocketing, and talking to informants. A lot of the gameplay rides I'm not drawing too much attention. While the stealth action element is minimal, with every moment in the game taking place in broad daylight, there are plenty of times you'll need to be discreet if you want to succeed or simply make it out alive. The blend option makes Altair so low profile he's basically invisible, and while it's handy for making it out of a tough spot, it can become a little ridiculous at times. The easy and responsive free running system is so breathtaking to watch and exhilarating to do that you might end up completing everything just because it's so damn fun to run around the city in whatever way you want. The free running you'll do to traverse the rooftops of the cities is far and away the best part of Assassin's Creed, and the smooth, seamless animation makes it an even more satisfying experience. Actually assassinating each target is where the tension culminates into some of the game's most memorable moments, but you'll have to be subtle in your approach more often than not if you don't want your target to get away before you land the killing blow. For the first half of the game, this formula is as entertaining as it can be, but as the game progresses, you'll slowly notice that the basic setup does not. You'll eventually need to do the same sort of approach to your target nine times in a row, and the differences are minimal at best. This repetition is the game's single and most disappointing aspect. While there is plenty of satisfaction, the repetition is just too evident to ignore. Altair is one of the most badass heroes we've seen in a long time, and the game world that he's surrounded by is one of the most believable digital environments we've ever seen. Assassin's Creed had its fair share of dignity-sapping hype, and its release has brought about mixed reactions from the industry as a whole. I, however, cannot understand how anyone could not recommend playing this game. Repetition and stupid enemies aside, Assassin's Creed is an exhilarating, beautiful and memorable experience that every gamer should have the privilege to enjoy.